everybody, I'm Stacey J. And I'm Chuck Duran. Welcome to an awesome new episode of VO Buzz Weekly. We have the beautiful Ann Ganguza in studio yes. today, and you guys are getting a lesson in marketing and branding you're never gonna forget. And a lot more, so let's get Heck to yeah. it. Here comes Ann. Our guest is a multi-talented voice actor, producer, coach, and the genius behind VO Peeps meetups and events and the Career Education Scholarship Fund. She is going to dazzle you with her expertise in marketing, branding, and networking, and a lot of other things as well. We are so excited to get buzzed with a smart and stunning dear friend of ours, Anne Ganguza. <gasps> Thank you so and much. And deserves so a round of applause being today. Here. It's so you great to so see sweet. you. You are so sweet. And I uh, have to say, gorgeous. Anne gets out of her car, and <laughs> the whole freaking neighborhood turns around and goes like, who's that? Well, they're doing some construction across from the studio, and it was like, <laughs> Yeah, they're so. like, wow, nice place for We're construction. We're going to have to walk her to her car afterwards. Oh, you guys are too kind. You look too fabulous. Kind. Thank you. Love the hair. Always Thank you. Love all the things. The you know, I want, I, want, I, want, yeah. I want everybody to see that right now because it's oh, so freaking yes, show cool. show it to that camera. Look at that. B.O. Peeps. She with is, a heart. She is with a heart. She is blinged out to the <laughs> max. That is why she is a marketing, branding wizard. But before we go there... I don't get to say these words together a lot, so I really want to do this. <laughs> um, you know, people know Anne in the voiceover world, but I need to, to say that for many years, at least 10 years, you were in IT, you were an IT network mm -hmm. project manager. I was. Network visualization wow. specialist. Research and development in human joint replacement models and in technology systems. So, okay. How did you go from all of those fantastic, <laughs> wonderful technical careers to voiceover? Well, thank you for going there. Take uh, us on first the of all, I, I do have a I do have a history. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do enjoy a, a touch of technology. I think anybody who knows me knows that. Yeah. Um, my degree is in computer graphics engineering, and so when I graduated school, I started. Uh, I worked as a design engineer for an orthopedic company, and I helped design um, prosthetics, hips and knees replacements. Wow. So that was a lot of fun, and I did it on a computer system, on a on a, a CAD system, mm -hmm. um, and I did that for about five years. And I met my next boss at that job um, in a training class for the computer. And he happened to ask me, he said, have you ever thought about teaching? And I said, well, no, I've never taught before, but I love the computer and I love, you know, doing this. And he said, you know, maybe you would teach part time for our school. So I started teaching part time computer graphics mm. and I found that I absolutely loved the interaction. I love teaching. I love sharing my knowledge and yeah. my passion for it. And I did that for many, many years. And I ended up actually, after um, working in orthopedics, going into IT, working for the school, and wow. doing IT as well as teaching IT to adults and high school students. And She's I- She's like a superhero. I loved yeah, it. I know. <laughs> I love it. I, you know, I remember, I remember, it was 10 years into that job, and I kept thinking to myself, I love my job. I mean, I absolutely love, I didn't yeah. know anybody else that loved their job more than me. And mm -hmm. I was just so, entranced in the technology and so passionate about the technology and I think that that transferred over to my students um, and people that came in contact with me and I think that that kind of it was a good relationship especially if you were going to teach it right yeah. uh, well and, and you can tell that you clearly love technology because when you're doing VO peeps meetups and when you do your whole global yeah. we were so lucky to be on your show last yes. year when oh, you do your show. global live streaming I mm -hmm. mean you can just tell you are like in every facet of it and you're like yes and you've got George and you've got Dan and you, I mean, you're just like, you. your whole garage, her whole garage looks like NASA. It's like this, <laughs> it this did, yeah. she's got like this team of men all straddled around different screens. It's, but you know, you can just feel that you love how all of that comes together and then the world comes to your Well, I love how it, show. I love how it brings people together. And, I, and we, we were pioneers at the school that I worked for in distance education and dis mm -hmm. distance learning technologies. Mm -hmm. And so I was very much a part of investigating new technologies as they evolved. And I found that it really connected. It connected our students together. It connected campuses together. And people that would normally not be able to get the education could finally get education through right. distance learning mm -hmm. and through video technologies and the network and, and the internet. And I, I actually mentioned the other day on a post that if I could marry the internet, I would. Um, <laughs> I'm that, I, I just, I really believe in the technology. I believe in how it brings people together. Mm -hmm. And that was the formation of VO Peeps. That was the basis for forming the group because wow, 
cool. I wanted to be able to bring people together and to and to bring education together and to do that through technology. Yeah. So then so. you you're you're doing the joint replacements now. I know who to go to if I need a hip. <laughs> um, but how did you She'll get into your, your your shoe? Hip. I want design. you know I want sparkles on my hip. But how did you transition into mm -hmm. voiceover? Well, when I was in IT and technology for 18 years working at the school, um, in the late 1990s, we installed voiceover IP phone systems when they first came out. So the um, technology was, you know, bleeding yeah. edge. This is bleeding edge. It's kind yeah. of, yeah, bleeding edge is, is where I, I kind of feel where my personality fits in. I, I like to be a little bit on the edge mm -hmm. um, of everything I do. And so we were always on the bleeding edge of technology. So we were one of the first um, campuses to implement, actually, um, in the in the United States to implement a, a large scale voice over IP phone system and we would deploy um, phones throughout different campuses through government institutions wow. nonprofit institutions and I would be the project manager and so at the end of a, a large install I would you know go to the client and I would say okay so you, you have all your phones installed the only thing you have to do is record that welcome greeting and you know that mm. menu tree yeah. and they would just look at me and laugh <laughs> they're like <laughs> No, you'll do that, right? And mm -hmm. <laughs> so full service, yes. Okay, well, so by default, I ended up doing it. And I have to tell you that working in IT for so long, I mean, I actually, I had the pager and everything. Yeah. I was like on call like 24 seven. Um, I actually locked myself in an office. And at that time, it was the late 1990s. You actually picked up the phone and yeah. you recorded your message in the phone. Oh. Uh, and that's how, that's how you did that. I actually loved to just lock myself in, in an office. Nobody could say, oh, my, my email doesn't work, my computer's down, my network's down, yeah. my internet's not working. I actually was in bliss. Nobody could bother me, and I just recorded phone messages. And I recorded hundreds of phone messages. And after a while, people, you know, it would be the welcome greeting, and people would yeah. call me up and say, Wow, your voice sounds so professional. And I thought, well, hey, you know, and I enjoyed doing it. I really, yeah. I became like every, every phone voice was a little bit different. I mean, I really honed and practiced yeah. my craft while yeah. I was based you know, on the company. Would you? Is that how you would decide? Like, if you were, if it was I, you a know tech what? Company, I, ex or? I experimented. I experimented, and in reality, the longer I took in the office, the more time I had yeah. where nobody was bothering yeah. me. So yeah. I really had a good time developing um, different voices for yeah. the phone systems. Well, and we heard well, some no, of the I, stuff on yeah. your website, yeah. Yeah. and we were like, "Wait a minute, is that her?" <laughs> I know because you did have some nice styles yeah. in there. No, if you go to anganguza.com. And she's got so many great demos, and um, but it's it's really and everyone is affected by IVR mm -hmm. and voicemail mm -hmm. and messaging, and it's it's a part of the business that we don't hear about. But there's a lot of work in it, and there's yeah. a lot of people working in it. Yeah. So there are a lot of areas of voiceover, mm -hmm. and there are areas that are not always mentioned. And you are the queen of so many great areas that are un, I think, untapped. Okay, so medical and industrial mm -hmm. and corporate narration. E-learning, IVR and on-hold messaging, which I love, telephone and voicemail recordings, PowerPoint presentations, internet web flash presentations, real estate virtual tours, PSAs, seriously. Okay, so I wanna talk about these it, all of these in depth get comfortable. Yeah, no. a lot of those. But uh, a lot of these are areas that people are affected by. Sure. But they're not aware that that is a human being mm -hmm. with a certain skill set that mm -hmm. is creating these sounds. And so I would like to, I want you to talk about some of these areas. And I want you to talk about, look, what do you think the skill sets are to be competitive in these areas? And how can sure. people get into them? Well, actually, they became my areas of expertise because they were things that I had experience in and things like, yeah. for example, medical. Yeah. Um, I worked in the orthopedic industry for, you know, for five years. And mm -hmm. so therefore, that is an area that I have some expertise in. Corporate e-learning, I taught um, IVR, telephony, uh, I installed phone systems. So those were all part of my experience. She installed yeah. phone but wait, systems. Go back because not everyone knows what IVR and tele telephony is. So okay. tell, so break it down. That would be the... that would be um, telephone welcoming greetings mm -hmm. and then a menu tree. So now that 
for the most part, everybody's gone voice over IP, and that's very similar to the everybody kind of going to um, recording. You know, ISDN is, yeah. is now evolving into an IP-based technology. Right. Mm -hmm. um, for phone voice over IP, there's your welcome message, which is basically what you hear when you call the. Give us know. a sample. Yeah. Oh, thank you. You know, <laughs> thank you for calling. You know, that sort of a thing. Or, or you know, um, right. thank you welcome, for welcome to the Bergen County. You know, that kind yeah. of a thing is your yeah. your welcome greeting, and then what will happen is that you'll have it's almost like a flowchart and you'll mm -hmm. go into an interactive uh, menu tree which right. will be press one for sales press two for support that sort of thing right. and so that's all that's all encoded into the computer system so that your call is directed yeah. to the right mm -hmm. uh, to the right place and so it's not necessarily that you have to have a live operator there and that's the way it is for the most part I mean when right. you call a company yeah. you know you, in order to route efficiently um, you know the phone calls that's really what's happening now and and so doing telephony and IVR, I absolutely love it because nobody likes, everybody wants to hear a human being. <laughs> yeah. Nobody wants to hear that phone message. So right. I almost take it as a challenge. I mean, if they've got to listen to my voice, I'm going to make it as sweet and as kind yeah. as, and, you do. And, and as, so and as entertaining as it can be, yeah. you know, for the person at the other end of the phone. Because I know that they're not, you know, they're not necessarily patient. Right. They're not necessarily right. wanting to, yeah. to listen to it. <laughs> my, and, my favorite is like the, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you're like on the other going, I said yes, and they're like punching me. Exactly, up. exactly. So and then, the, and then there's a, there's another uh, genre of of telephony, which is on hold messaging, which mm -hmm. is almost like commercials. That's when you're put on hold for a while, and you get the music in the background, yeah. and right. then you'll hear a series of maybe ten or fifteen second, you know, blurbs about you know selling their product or did you know, you yeah. know, that kind yeah. of a thing. Yeah. Right. And so that's a that's kind of another you know niche market in. What is in, that called? That's a on hold messaging. On, on hold, hold messaging. messaging. Okay, yeah. cool. And and when you talk about marketing um, to that to the to that particular client that's going to want to hire you for your voice for their phone system, yeah. it's a different type, it's a different message that you're talking to. It's a different vocabulary mm -hmm. uh, to that market as opposed to, let's say, um, corporate narration or e-learning. Yeah. So you have, to, you have to kind of pinpoint your marketing direction towards your audience and who you're selling to and, and speak on their terms. Right. Most people aren't going to understand IVR. They're not going to. They don't know what that is. If somebody just wants, I just want a phone message or voicemail. That right. might be something that I would type in Google, and right. that's how I would find the talent that could do that. You know, who can? You know, I want to Google. You know, voicemail voice or something like that. Yeah. Telephone voice. Yeah. And so, therefore, when I designed my websites, um, I designed them with those words. Kind of keywords, keywords, uh, yeah, keywords so in the website, so you. people could find me easier. And yeah. I find that I get a lot of great business that way, um, organically. When people search in Google and they find yeah. me, they find the website, as opposed to going through, let's say, another venue, like through a, you know, a casting agent or, or yeah. you know, pay to play or right. something like that. But people that find me organically on the web, those are the clients that I like because I can actually. They're not familiar with with the budget of Voice One Two Three or the, yeah. the budget of of, of, a, of a pay to play or you know something mm -hmm. else they they don't really know what they want and they're they're actually coming to me to educate them a little bit yeah. same thing with with medical you know my expertise was in medical mm -hmm. and so i just followed everything that i had expertise in which i always recommend that yeah. you do when you're being a voiceover entrepreneur and Absolutely. a voiceover business is everybody would say to me well i'm just starting out so how do i i don't have a I don't have any experience, so what do I do? Mm -hmm. Well, you cater to the experience that you have, um, and you cater to that clientele and to that market, and that's how you start to arrive at you know your your niche market and and where perhaps you you want to go and and, mm -hmm. and yeah. where your passion lies. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah, well, because especially for a technical narration and medical mm -hmm. narration, I mean, you can tell when someone has never said right. Yeah. These. 16 consonant words before. Sure. I mean, you need to have them flow off just like we're talking right. now. And, and even if you don't know them, I mean, you have to kind of look at it like the challenge is I love hard words. Mm -hmm. I love anything that challenges me. And so when I organically get to that point where I'm voicing something that I'm excited about and I'm passionate about, boom, that's it. That's that's the key, yeah. really. Um, I don't necessarily have to understand that 25 word, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or 25 yeah. character medical word or mm -hmm. terminology. And, and the fact that I actually said it and, and it interests me, you know, and the fact right. that I've discovered that and that comes out in my voice, the passion comes out. 
Definitely. So she entertains herself. I do. While she's reading things that she may not even That's understand. Right. That's right. Which is fabulous. And we're going to segue into the branding marketing, but you you have done, a, just for your own business, a really, really good job of being very specific about mm -hmm. the different kinds of voicing that you do. Mm -hmm. And you have a portal for everyone to go where they want to go. And the demo. And so can you talk about that as far as, you know, it's like with animation or commercials. You can't put an animation spot in a commercial spot sure. in a video game spot. It's the same thing with all of these areas, yeah? Absolutely, absolutely. And, it, you know, and it's funny because people will say to me, well, you know, so, oh, have I heard you anywhere? Or where have I heard you? And, and so I, I love doing, I love telephony. I love IVR. I love medical. I love e-learning. And so while some people might not think that that's glamorous, let me tell you, I mean, the work is there and yeah. it's plentiful and it's out there. Um, there's a lot of people doing it and it may not sound glamorous, but it, it's there and I love it. And so yeah. that's really what that's really, I think, the key, right? It's, it's yeah, well, and you absolutely. have the opportunity to have ongoing relationships exactly. with clients, and, exactly. and work begets work. And so the next exactly. thing you know, they're putting you into a whole other thing. So it seems like there's a, a more of a pay it forward kind yep. of thing. For oh, work. absolutely. And and I've been very fortunate that you know I've 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 been working very hard, you know, for quite a few years now to build the business up, and now I have you know steady clients that keep coming back. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And that's just a really nice. Thing to have, um, yeah. where you're busy with repeat clients, and that's and you have to and you have to maintain those relationships as well. It's mm -hmm. it's not something you just kind of have and then forget about, but no. you're always cultivating new right. relationships, and that's why I place so much emphasis on my branding and marketing. Let's talk about some key points in regards to marketing and branding for creative pros in the voiceover industry. Okay. Well, let's talk about some of that because you're an expert in that field. <laughs> Come on, Ann. All right, let it. me just, let's just kind of get to maybe how I, I became a little more experienced <laughs> okay. at this. Um, when when I moved from the East Coast to the West Coast, mm -hmm. I gave up my IT job of after 18 years. And I said, oh, I'm just going to take a break. Like it took like a three month break because I was tired. Yeah. And um, it's not that I had really thought I was going to go into voiceover full time. But then at that time, the economy kind of had a little bit of a drop. And, and I was putting my resumes out in California and people weren't hiring. And so I said, all right, well, let's just go. I had been part time mm -hmm. in voiceover mm -hmm. um, while I was working in IT. And so I kind of had that experience for a few years. I had that experience of, of you really have to. Um, you really have to discipline yourself in order to make that work. And yeah. so I, I said, all right, let's just give this a go. I'm going to go full time into my voiceover business. And so by, by pure, you know, desperation, <laughs> I became good at marketing <laughs> because I had no money. I mean, that was it. I went from, you know, a salaried position to absolutely, here we go, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, voiceover in a new area, you know, from yeah. the East Coast to the West Coast, and I didn't know anybody. And kind of simultaneously, it's why I, I decided to formulate the, the VO Peeps group, because I needed to make contacts. Yeah. So I, and I also needed to maintain my contacts on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And so I had to have a combination of reworking my website so that I could maintain my relationships on the East Coast and then develop new relationships on the West Coast and have it all kind of come together yeah. online and in person. So that was kind of why I, I formed VO Peeps and mm. started to really focus on marketing myself so that people could get to know me. Yeah. And when I first started off, well, I remember- you've done a wonderful job. Yeah. Thank, everybody well, knows thank you. you now. <laughs> Um, if you don't know me, you're yeah. not online. That's <laughs> right. probably That's it, it, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 absolutely. Yeah. And, and I've, I've worked, and, and I love the fact that it's a combination, really. It's not just online. I know there's a lot of people who are um, a little timid with technology. And, I, you know, I was in IT for so many years, I think I became, you know, kind of internet smart. And I worked, yeah. you know, for an internet provider, really. And so I have a lot of experience in it, and I'm not afraid of it. And so... Therefore, when I started to market online and, and brand online, I wasn't really afraid to, to put myself out there. Mm -hmm. And I know that for a lot of people, they're very timid to get themselves out there. I'll be like, why aren't you on, yeah. you know, why aren't you tweeting? Why aren't you, you know, on Facebook? Yeah. And there's a lot of people who are very yeah. hesitant about putting and themselves. And a lot of times they just don't really know where to start. Yeah, right. you know? exactly. it can be overwhelming. Yeah. It can be overwhelming. Yeah. It can be overwhelming. But I, I think like anything, 
um, that you that you tackle in your life, yeah. you know, you have to do something every day that scares you a little bit. What were some <laughs> of the, what yeah. were some of the, the those those points that you did that worked for you mm -hmm. that you would recommend that other people listen in regards to marketing? Mm -hmm. These are a few things that work yeah, to get started. And these are, to sure, get started sure. just to get you on the right track. And then in regards to branding, mm -hmm. these are a few key points that you want to focus on first, and that that's going to get you going. Sure, because I think that'll really help people out a lot. Well, marketing and branding kind of go hand in hand, yeah. and I don't think that um, you, you can market without necessarily having a brand. You have to start. You have to start. Yeah. In in essence, and I would say the best piece of advice that I could give anybody is to to just go ahead and dive in and do it. Don't wait. Don't wait for your brand. Don't wait to you know. Don't not work because you don't have a website or you don't have a business card or you don't have a brand. I know so many people who are so hesitant and they're like, well, you know, I don't have my, when my website gets up, I'll be able to, right. you know, when I get my business card, I'll be able to. No, you know, it, it's okay. You know, it yeah. don't, don't wait for that because it's both marketing and branding is an evolving process. Mm -hmm. And my brand has evolved over years. Sure. And yeah. it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. It really yeah. is. And you have to be patient and you have to kind of just roll with the punches. I always like to say that I never fail at any marketing or I never fail at any branding. I mm -hmm. simply just switch directions mm -hmm. yeah. depending on what's working and what's not working. You can always start by, you know, with marketing and, and getting online and just, oh, how shall I say it? Lurk. <laughs> I know Lurk. that sounds bad, yeah. but you can just hang out and just watch people yeah. and watch how they market. Mm -hmm. I I have to say, when I first started Twitter, I I, I didn't understand it. I said, "Ugh, oh, you know, I'm a chatty kind of girl." And I know how, 140 characters. 140 yeah. characters. I can't. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't do it. But I'm gonna try it. And I just said, "I'm I'm gonna. It's gonna be an experiment. It's gonna be just for my voiceover business. And I'm gonna see how it works." So the first step is to just create that account. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't know. Well, God, what do I say? You know, what do I tweet? And so in reality, all I did was I started following people that were in the industry, and I started watching how they marketed themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I'm trying to remember when my first Twitter account, it, it was back in 2009, I believe. Yes, that's when I joined. Wow. And I and I started following a few people in the industry, and I started watching how they marketed. There was one one woman in particular who was fabulous. She um, works in, in the trade show industry. Mm -hmm. And she would actually tweet if she was at a trade show and she was working, um, you know, she was like spokesperson, she was working for Sony or whatnot, and she would start tweeting for Sony. And of course, you know, hey, I'm at, you know, CES and I'm at the Sony booth and, you know, come check us out. And that's it. And it was great because Sony loved it because she was promoting Sony. Right. And she was also promoting herself as being an active, um, you know, spokesperson, voiceover artist that's in the industry and mm -hmm. available and working. Yeah. Right, and right. so I started just watching how she would go ahead and market. And I started kind of, you know, doing mimicking the same thing. The same yeah, mimicking the same doing, thing. Yeah. And, and then I just continued to grow uh, the people that I was following. And then I started to... I started to basically retweet yeah. and you know so and still I haven't said anything right yeah. so that's the easy part create an account it doesn't cost anything you know how, yeah. how can you you can't lose no right. and yeah. the cool right. thing about retweeting is yeah. cuz this is really neat and and if you don't know you'll learn but that just means that you're basically taking a message that somebody created mm -hmm. and you're just retweeting it right mm -hmm. um, exactly and I noticed that when somebody retweets something that I posted I'm like oh hey they retweeted me mm -hmm. and you actually pay attention to that person absolutely. so it's a pretty good way to get yourself right. noticed absolutely without saying anything exactly yeah. exactly yeah. and and I think that when it comes to marketing once you've started you've kind of you know dipped your toe in the water so to speak yeah. and you started watching and observing and and learning learning the internet is just a wonderful wonderful opportunity to learn uh, uh, yes. and, and that's one of the reasons why I love um, I just love the technology and so basically once you start getting your feet wet a little bit and then you can start retweeting then people will start to you know follow you then you'll start to slowly accumulate followers yeah um, and then it's basically just a, a learning process you know so as it I goes. I have the perfect marketing starting point for everybody out there. You ready for this? Okay, Check I'm ready. This Give out. it to us, Chuck. Here's what you do. Okay. You follow Anne. There you go. And Stacy and myself, right? Mm -hmm. and I love that. Anything that we post, you retweet or repost 
we noticed you, and you'll learn from actually what you're seeing you done, and that's a great step. When I started, yep. I didn't have that. Mm -hmm. Nobody told me that. Mm -hmm. It's so right. simple. Yeah. Okay, so you successfully lurked, you've retweeted and favorited and all of that. So you're ready to talk. I'm ready to what talk. Are some, yes. What are some good key steps to mm -hmm. get started in the right direction? Well, first of all, when you start to talk, you don't necessarily want to do a hard sell kind of a talk. And I yeah. think right. that that's pretty common sense. You definitely, most people are like, what do I say? Well, essentially what I, what I recommend for most people to, to start doing is start telling the story. Start telling the story of who you are. Because in reality, you, in the voiceover world, it's pretty easy for us. We're selling ourselves. We're selling mm -hmm. our voice, right? So if people get to know you and know who you are, and they get to know who you are through social media, and you're mm -hmm. telling the story, well, then you're effectively selling mm -hmm. um, without necessarily, you know, in your face kind of, yeah. you know, yeah. selling. And so it becomes more attractive for people. And people want to, people, it's, it's a well-known fact that people want to hire people that they like. Yeah. True. So you want to establish and engage people. And your circle, the people that are in your circle, um, not only people in the industry, but you have to make sure that you're reaching outside of the industry because mm -hmm. those are the people that are, are potentially going to hire you. Yep. I mean, right. so don't just have you know followers that are in the voiceover industry. Try to get it in all the you know outlying you know industries. Right. You know, right. is there like a media point, production and that absolutely. sort of thing? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Is there a point you think where you need to keep a certain boundary as far as how much you reveal and what you're revealing? When well, you're telling your story. Yeah, that's actually a really good question. Because sometimes I, yeah. I read things on Facebook or... And it's a little too much. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Or people have said to me, I didn't know that my relative was sick until mm -hmm. I read it on Facebook. And I don't know, that just is kind of... Mm -hmm. I don't know. How do you feel about that? I think if you stay away from religion and politics, mm -hmm. personally. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that Facebook is great for engaging people. And the studies show that the, the most frequent thing that people do on Facebook is post photos. Mm -hmm. And so each social media you know, technology has its place. Right. And they're really starting to, to, you know, before it was like, oh my God, do I do Facebook or do I, twi you know, do I do Twitter or, you know, what do I, Pinterest, what do I do? They all kind of have their place and they all mm -hmm. have their target market and their target audience right. as well. Right. So, for example, if you were marketing your, your business on just Facebook, well, think of what you could do with Twitter. Think of what you can do with Pinterest. It's a different market. Pinterest is a, a kind of a younger market. Instagram is even younger. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it really depends on who you're selling to. And, and my recommendation really is when you start talking, tell the story of yourself so that people like you and people want to be engaged with you and people find out uh, what what your passion is through mm -hmm. your storytelling. Mm -hmm. Well, that is all we have for part one, but we'll be back next week with part two. Don't miss it. Yes, we will. And keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest at VO Buzz Weekly. Take care, you guys, and just remember, you, you always, always have, have time, time for, for a, a little, little buzz. buzz. <laughs>